All right, I'm going to take a look at all the uh, radar imagery from the uh, tornado that hit Moore, Oklahoma on May 20th, 2013. What we're looking at right now is the radar image at about 1.39 p.m. Central Time. You can see not too much going on. Now, we'll zoom in here in a minute. I want to let this loop first because there's something I want to show you. Uh, we do notice that there is this outflow boundary from uh, probably the prior day storm that's set up just to kind of the north and west of Oklahoma City. You'll also see kind of another one uh, show up here in a second. I'm going to loop this. I just want you to watch how fast these storms develop. Uh, also, by the way, before I do loop this, this little rain shower here, yes, this one, that's the one that produced the EF5 tornado hit more. I'm going to put this into motion. You can just see how quickly these things develop. All of a sudden, right about here, things just develop in a very quick hurry. And you see this whole line develops. A line of, of supercell thunderstorms. There are about, I believe, uh, four of them that were basically just lined up, marching across the state. Uh, from pretty much the central portion of the state south down towards the uh, Texas-Oklahoma border. You can see just how quick that that um, just develops. Very, very quick. It was very quick development. And that's why things happen in a hurry. Let's zoom on in. Let's go on down to um, the Moore area here. And again, here's our outflow boundary right about in here. Here's our little, just a rain shower just south of Chickasha. And that's going to develop into our tornado. So we'll put it into motion again. You can see all of a sudden, two another cell develops here of, of rain, just rain. Another little cell here, that's the one we we're watching. Little thunderstorm, no big deal. Our outflow boundary, a little bit more defined all of a sudden. Another little rain shower here just to the west of Mustang. We continue to put this into motion and actually have to go backwards, unfortunately. And then it just takes off. Then it just takes off. I mean, pretty much all of uh, Oklahoma City, at least the western metro, is seeing this. We have what's basically now a supercell right here. Very classic. You'll notice that I believe it splits in here, or if it didn't split, um, what it's going to do is combine. And we're seeing already right here, rotation. You can see by this notch right here in our reflectivity. If we click over to the velocity table, we don't see it much yet. It's just starting to develop, so the, the velocities haven't picked it up yet. As we continue uh, looping it just a little bit more, and now we have broad rotation here being shown on the reflectivity, and now we're starting to see our rotation here, albeit very weak right now. We'll go back to the rate reflectivity, just a couple more here, and there we go. Actually, we'll back it up one. Right here, is basically our tornado as it formed. You can see the inflow coming in right through here with no uh, reflectivity being shown and then you have the hook right here. Your rotation is right in that area. And if we could go to the velocity scans, yes, now you see your rotation. It gets, it starts out strong pretty quickly. This, this storm was able to really get going in a hurry. We're at um, 2.46 central time now, May 20th. And this next scan here, we got a debris ball just south of Highway 37, and just e e well, excuse me, just west of I-44 is our debris ball. That's about where the tornado touched down. You can see on the velocity scans here that it's pretty strong. And as we hit the next frame, it gets worse from here. Unfortunately, you can see it's getting closer to Highway 44. Uh, much more rotation now. You can see it's becoming well defined. It's well defined on here. There's our rotation, and as we continue looping it just a little bit more, there's a huge debris ball now on the ground. Right about here is where the tornado started coming down and went from a, a stovepipe tornado, stovepipe shaped tornado, to a wedge tornado. And it did that in a matter of about two minutes. It did that in a really big hurry. You can see our rotation is much stronger, and even in the next radar scan, it, it intensifies immensely immensely intensifies it, it's amazing how how intense this rotation in here uh, got um, here's our very big debris ball it's about a mile and a half wide right now a lot of debris in it too you're getting a high reflectivity bias that's more indicative of large hail in a storm that's at a low level so that's a lot of debris being thrown up into the air and here's our debris ball now much more defined 
It's coming on at about a mile and three quarters, almost two miles wide now. It's already crossed Highway 44. It's headed for the uh, western edge of Moore. And here it is now. This is a very well-defined debris ball. Strong rotation coming into the storm. You can see here's the other part of the rotation here. So you have this going on and just a, a massive amount of circulation. The velocities verify that. I mean, this is very, very strong rotation in the storm. Um, and even our uh, normalized rotation, which is a, a, a derived product here, had some very high values. I think we were up close to uh, we were up close to three on the scale, and the scale going to go up to about four. So very strong rotation being shown there. Um, we're now at uh, what is um, I want to say that 3:12 local time. The central time anyways there and this tornado now moves into western moor very well defined debris ball lots of intense rotation here again the velocities show that as well and this is 316 about 317 um, central time here as the tornado enters western moor So I want to take a quick look in the uh, 3D mode here as this uh, tornado moves into the western edge of Moore towards uh, I-35 and Highway 77. So here's our tornado right here. Let's see if I can maybe uh, darken this up a little bit. There we go. Here's our tornado right here. And we also have a hail core right over here as well. You can see the intense um, reflectivity towards the, the ground there. We'll throw this on here, and you can also see the tornado is right in through here. Now it's tilted a little bit. Um, I wasn't able to set the storm motion vector because I don't really quite know what the storm motion vector was that day. I forgot to write it down, unfortunately. So it looks a little tilted, otherwise it would be standing more straight up if I had that in there. And you can see a very large storm off here with that hail core as well. Actually, if we click the uh, hail velocities, well not this one, let's try this one here. Here's the hail core right in here. A lot of hail. And as you advance it a little bit, you can see that the hail core intensifies. And then it begins um, actually dumping hail at a pretty decent rate uh, just to the um, east of uh, Oklahoma City. A lot of hail came down. You can see it just off the, this frame here. That did indeed occur. So a lot, a lot of hail with the storm as well up towards uh, Midwest City, Dell City, uh, and into, again, just to, I believe Valley Brook got hail as well. Pretty much right along I-240 is where your hail was. Now we'll advance this just real quick. The tornado's into more very, very wide debris ball. I believe it was about two miles wide here at this point. A ton of debris being flown up in there. Very, very large wedge tornado was 1.3 miles or a little bit more than that perhaps across wide at one point as it entered more and just an insanely large tornado that entered the area again in the 3d mode we can see our tornado is uh, a little bit hard to spot but basically it's it's right here this large wedge tornado is basically right there uh, let me see if I can even try one more here nope that one didn't work out very well either but a very large tornado that move through. We'll advance it just a little bit quicker here and we can see there's the tornado going through more and after it hit more it had it a few issues. It started diminishing and that's where it started doing right here our, our rotation now. is isn't quite as uh, intense as it was. It's still there here but the tornado started to weaken. Uh, Lake Thunderbird sits about over here and as it approached Lake Thunderbird it began to weaken very quickly. You can see basically what was our debris ball is now detached from the rest of the storm and as it moves closer to the radar unfortunately we lose sight of a lot of different things including the rotation but basically right about here this is about uh, 342 local time in, in Oklahoma City so central time there that's about when the tornado lifted somewhere right in here where we couldn't really see it in the radar that's when the tornado actually lifted off the ground and then as it got out of that area and on the other side of the radar, you can still see there's broad rotation. That's what's being uh, notated here by this indication. And also if you look at the reflectivity, 
broad rotation here. Um, it did not go on to produce another tornado, but it did show rotation for quite a while as it moved off to the northeast, but uh, it did not produce another tornado, fortunately, as it did. The rotation did weaken, and finally we lose the rotation uh, well, way up over in here, just south of I-44 and Highway 8, uh, just east of Highway 18. So, a lot of rotation with that storm, a very powerful storm that moved through the uh, Moore, Oklahoma area. Again, just incredible damage out there. We'll take a look at some pictures here and also some other 3D radar imagery in just a moment.